Well, now, Saturday, Nigel Farage went to Trump Tower and had a meeting with the president-elect. Alongside him was Raheem Kassam, who was a chief of staff to Mr Farage and was, until recently, a UKIP leadership candidate. Well, Mr Kassam also works for Breitbart, the new service run by uh, Steve Bannon. I spoke to Mr Kassam earlier. I asked him for his impressions of Mr Bannon. Well, Steve was the first person to come over to England to uh, recruit me to run the uh, Breitbart London Bureau. And uh, I found him to be a, a very competent business person, but also a very nurturing boss. Uh, he, has, he has helped us and me and my colleagues uh, for the last couple of years develop as journalists and, and even as human beings, quite frankly. He's a very fathering figure inside the organisation. That's not to say that um, as a boss he's not tough. He is very tough. Um, but I think, uh, I think you know, what I also want to stress to people is that here is a man who really cares about other people, the people around him, and more important than anything, cares about his country. I mean, he's obviously been responsible through Breitbart for the publication, not written by him, but publication of very controversial pieces. Uh, you know, birth control makes women unattractive and crazy, that was one. His ex-wife says he didn't want his girls to go to school with too many Jews. Uh, he's published some pretty brutal stuff called Liberal Women, a bunch of dykes. How do you square that with what you've just said about him, this sort of gentle Steve Bannon? Now bear in mind, Stephen K. Bannon isn't responsible for the day-to-day -day output of Breitbart News as an editorial team, and the headlines that you're reading there are satirical opinion pieces rather than news items, um, and they are satirical if you, if you if you go ahead and read them, and they they're, they're using you know shock headlines to to, to you know poke a bit of fun. Um, uh, the point about his ex-wife, well, I, I actually believe his children did end up going to that school in the end, um, and the and the comment was I think retracted. So I think it's just one of those things uh, that comes out of of, uh, a divorce sometimes. I mean, he scares the hell out of a lot of people uh, because they don't think those sort of headlines are just funny, jocular stuff. But at the very least, would you grant that there's been a kind of coarsening of the public discourse and that he has been a big figure in that coarsening? Yeah, and I'm a big figure in that coarsening as well, Evan. Um, people are fed up. People are tired. Um, people don't want to do things the nice, polite... Uh, wishy-washy way anymore. You know, their wages are going down. They find themselves, their mortgages being foreclosed on. They found themselves out of jobs. People are angry. Um, and it's about time that people started reflecting that anger. There was a big gaping hole in the news and commentary market for a, a news organisation like Breitbart who actually reflected how people were feeling. Is it ugly? Is it, yes. Is it, is it varnished? No. But is it truthful? Absolutely. The big thing is you meeting Donald Trump on Saturday night with Nigel Farage. Now, just tell us, how was that meeting yep. set up? Who, who, who arranged that? Well, um, I was supposed to go and see um, Steve Bannon that day in Trump Tower, and uh, Nigel came along with me. Um, we went upstairs to see Steve and some of the some of the top people in the Donald Trump transition team, um, and we met with uh, a lot of them. And at one point, uh, Kellyanne Conway, the campaign manager, turned to us and said, uh, "Well, would you like to would you like to go up to the residence and, and see the president elect?" Um, and so we thought about it for all of one second and said, "Yes, that would be that would be phenomenal." It would be fantastic. And so we were whisked upstairs um, through the mountains and mountains of, of Secret Service um, and the door, the big golden door swung open and Mr Trump was there and he looked at Nigel square in the eye and he said, there he is, and welcomed into his home with a big hug. Uh, and we sat there talking with, uh, with the president-elect for uh, over an hour talking about what he had achieved. He was obviously very thoughtful about it and was, was pontificating on, on what his next steps were. Um, he was talking about uniting the country um, and he was floating policy ideas and, and we were floating some back at him. Um, did he express an opinion on the British government and the British government's treatment of him in the campaign? I know that um, had a, you had a whole hour to talk about things. Did he talk about Theresa May? Does he know who Theresa May is? Does he follow what British government ministers say about him? Yes, he, uh, he talked about Theresa May, he talked about their phone call, he said they spoke for around 20 minutes and he was very uh, kind and polite about it. He said she was very um, congratulatory and polite uh, when she called and, and, and they uh, had a chat and he was, he was positive about that. Um, the team, however, uh, Mr Trump's team, uh, was not really impressed um, with some of the statements that have come from some Downing Street staffers like Nick Timothy and Fiona Hill uh, during the campaign. They've been, been very rude about um, the president-elect uh, or Donald 
Donald Trump in the camp in campaign mode as he was uh, back then. So there will be there will be fences that need to be mended along that way. And I, I should argue this: this isn't about UKIP or the Conservative Party or Nigel Farage versus Theresa May. This is about making sure that we have the best working relationship with the United States, one of our best and closest allies. And I think what Downing Street needs to do is really think about what it means uh, to shun somebody who is so close um, to the president-elect like Nigel Farage. They should be welcoming him with open arms. Do you think Nigel Farage would be an honest broker for a government of which he is very critical? Do you think he could seriously go there and act as an ambassador for Theresa May? People like Nigel put their country first. He's done it his entire life. Um, and I think this situation would be no different. He would work in the best interest of the country. And if the government asks him to, to do something for them, like forging links with the new administration, that he would um, both make sure that those links happen. Is he going to give his opinion? Yes. Is he going to give his opinion when he disagrees um, with the British government or indeed with President-elect Trump? Yes. That's what Nigel Farage does. He's a thinker and he's a doer. And I'd like to see him put to work uh, for the British public in making sure that we have strong relationships with America. Did you get an impression in that, that hour-long meeting you had with him, and let's face it, that's probably as long as anybody's had with him uh, since he was voted, uh, elected last week, did you get an impression as to which Donald Trump we're going to get? The hard Trump, the one who talks about building a wall all over the place, or the one who says, well, there may be some fence along the border there? Which, which one is it for you, do you think? I think you're going to get a mix. I think when it comes to the tough decisions, um, the campaign promises that he's made, he is going to be tough and he is going to stand by uh, his, his pledges. Um, he will build this wall. Um, he is going to deport uh, illegal immigrants in the United States. But I think what he also wants to do is create a stakeholder society in the United States. Some of the, some of the uh, policy issues that he raised with us really told me that he had the best interest of the American people at heart. So I think you will see him um, serve with perhaps a hard head, but a but a soft heart um, and making sure that he actually can unite a country. He was a man and, and, and even though I supported him going into this, I was still just taken aback by how contemplative he was. He was still digesting what had happened and he seemed so intent to bring the country back together. I mean, you'll know that a lot of people think they hear you, Nigel Farage, Donald Trump all in there together in the White House, the President of the United States. They think this is the lunatics have taken over the asylum. How long do you think it is before disenchantment will set in, that people will say, this guy has broken his promises, he led the expectations in the campaign, he's not close to being able to deliver them, he's got all sorts of fantasies going among uh, voters that he's not going to be able to deliver on. Well, somebody stopped us uh, on the street in New York yesterday, Nigel and I standing outside a restaurant, and uh, they said, well, look, I'm part of the establishment. I work for a big global human rights organization, and I'm terrified um, of, a, of a President Donald Trump. And I said to him this, um, are you an optimist or are you a pessimist? And he said, well, at this point, we just have to be optimistic, don't we? So I think the premise of your question is uh, a pessimistic one. I'm not a pessimist. Um, I think the man will stick by his, uh, his campaign pledges, and I think he will. Uh, I think he'll actually go down as a really great president. Raheem Kassam, thanks for talking to us. Thanks. Thank you.